What's up everyone? So I'm back with another video. Um, this one's gonna be a little bit different. I recently got some stuff in the mail and I'm gonna be kind of doing a review of it and then also doing some install stuff. So the first thing I got was my CX racing kit. It pretty much came with headers, um, a piece of the exhaust, engine mounts, some trans mounts brackets that I'm probably gonna have to modify. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. And then also I got my Collins uh, transmission adapter. So I'll be able to run a CD09 with a T56 bell housing. All right, so there are a lot of rumors about CX racing. Um, a lot of people call it China Express and all this kind of stuff like that. But um, I actually was able to find uh, a forum with one dude who seemed to be sponsored by them in a sense to where his car was a template for all their stuff. So they pretty much made everything based on his car and then they were able to copy it. So I'm gonna go over like how they make the stuff and the welds and everything so you guys can see that this their parts are actually pretty good quality. All right, so first things up, the headers. Um, I'll get a little bit closer so you guys can see. Overall, they, they look pretty nice. You can see the welds on them aren't bad at all. They seem good quality. Uh, there's even a spot for like an O2 sensor. Um, they have a little bit of bracing on them as well, but yeah, I don't see why these wouldn't be good quality. They seem pretty durable, and the welds also seem to be well-placed and strong as well. They don't look like they're just half-ass done or anything like that. So the next thing is the kind of like downpipe to the headers uh, that helps clear over the actual cross member where the steering rack is. Um, same thing, everything looks pretty nice. Uh, they're all V-band too, so it's really easy to add on anything else that you would want. So I'm, I'm just going to pretty much end my exhaust here uh, with the headers. So it's pretty much just going to be this, and then I'm going to build my own exhaust eventually. But uh, yeah, it, it seems to be pretty good quality so far. So speaking of the V-bands, it comes with some, so you don't need to go buy any. And next thing is the engine mount. So here's the bottom half of it. Again, I'll let you guys look at the welds. Everything seems pretty good. Looks like a pretty sturdy piece of fabrication. So yeah, um, this is just the bottom half. This is what actually mounts to the, the cross member. And then let me pull out the top half so you guys can see how it actually works. All right, so here's the top half. Pretty much these go together. Just like that. Um, sorry. And then the engine, the side of the engine plates right here, and then the second one will go on the other side of the engine. Uh, there's also a bushing in here, so it's not completely solid. So you'll have a little bit of uh, vibration resistance and it won't be snapping or anything like that. But yeah, so far, everything looks good. All right, the last thing is these like pieces of metal for the transmission. Mounts, I'm most likely just gonna have to use some fabrication and get them to fit because they're meant for a T56. So uh, I might be able to just add some stuff to this, like maybe weld a couple, more, maybe weld a couple more part or like little braces onto it or something like that to get it to work, but I'll figure it out. So I'm just pretty much using this as like extra metal to mount the transmission onto. So overall, this was a thousand dollar kit. I was going to get the, the kit with the, the oil pan but i decided not to just because it added an extra 500 bucks and originally i ordered um the 2002 gto oil pan offline with the front sump and like i said my mail got stolen so i was able to find it again but used on face on the facebook marketplace and it was only like 80 bucks i don't know if that's what they normally go for but i just found it for really cheap but 80 dollars or 200 dollars which is 500 is a pretty good deal so I'm just gonna go with that. Plus, if you do get the CX Racing oil pan, um, you're gonna have to get a, a remote oil filter set up and get the AN lines, fittings, and everything like that to get it to work. So I was just gonna save myself the hassle and keep the, uh, the oil filter on the bottom of the oil pan. The other thing that came is my Collins adapter so I can use a CD09 transmission with a T56 bell housing. Uh, this pretty much is like a sandwich plate that you'll put in between the bell housing and the transmission. I'm not gonna go over it too much because I'm gonna do a video once I get a couple more parts um, here so I can actually do the install for it and then you guys will see exactly how it's done. But otherwise it just comes like this and then all the hardware is included. One thing I did notice about this is that it has these slots right here. 
So when you have the slave cylinder on, it, from what it looks like, you should be able to bleed it while the transmission is still on instead of having to like reach into the bell housing to do so. All right, so next I'm actually gonna test fit the engine in the car. I don't have any of the wiring sorted yet, so it's gonna look like a mess, plus I wanna take out a lot of stuff out and clean up the engine bay before I put the engine in for good. But I'm basically gonna be doing it so I can show you guys where I'm gonna put it along uh, the engine mounts, because it's, it's adjustable so you can move the engine back and forth, and how it fits, because there's some things that block the fitment, like the heater core tubes coming out of the FRS. There's two little ones in the engine bay. I'll show you when we get to it on the cause issues and also how to get it to sit behind the center line of the wheels because if the engine's in front of the center line of the wheels, it's gonna feel super off balance and the car's just not gonna handle the way you want it to. All right, so where these are going to mount is actually right up in here on the engine. I'm probably just going to uh, have it a little past centered sitting back in the car and then see where the fitment lines up for that. So I have both the engine mount or the top pieces of the engine mounts on. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the car and we're gonna put the bottom halves on. The reason I'm doing this is just cause uh, it's gonna be a lot easier just sliding one bolt through to connect it to the bottom piece compared to like either trying to do these four bolts or line it up with the, the bolt hole that I'm not really gonna be able to see in the cross member. All right, so basically these mounts are gonna sit in the car just like this over the cross member hole. It's kind of dark, sorry. But um, yeah, right there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm also going to kind of zip tie away some of this wiring, the, um, the old slave cylinder, and just some things that the engine might bump into. So we can go ahead and get this going. <laughs> mistake a small mistake on how they're supposed to line up it's actually supposed to be this way not tilting inwards and then just like pretty much completely vertical and yeah that's how the engine mounts are supposed to sit all right back to time lapse and we're gonna put the engine in All right, so I just finished. I ran into a couple of small issues and um, doing this kind of helped me decide exactly how I want the engine to sit, but let me show you guys what I have so far. All right, so here you go. Engine sitting in the car. Um, it is sitting really far back. I initially had the mounts sit, having it sit even farther, but it just, there's no way it was gonna fit. I'm probably gonna have to max it out coming forward to these, just cause uh, I don't think the bell housing is gonna clear that at all. Plus the heads won't clear the um the master cylinder for the clutch and i've seen people clear that before so i'm gonna go ahead and move it forward a little bit or just plan to do that also the engine's kind of crooked right now uh I, I would have to like slide it around and adjust the mounts to actually like sit exactly where i want it but i'm not too worried about that yet just because i'm gonna when i put this engine in for good it's not it's gonna have the transmission on it so i'm not too worried about that right now because it will line up perfectly having the transmission support the engine in the tunnel. The other thing that actually might be okay is the heater core tips. Uh, I'm not moving it forward, it might be fine. It might not get in the way or anything, which means I might try to run heat in this car, which it, it's pretty easy. It, I can plumb the water pump straight into this without an issue, but that'll be kind of nice. I can defog my windows and stuff like that if I ever go drift at a track that's colder than Southern California. 
All right, well, there you have it, the engine's in the car. Hopefully next time it will sit in there for good. Probably probably not, they'll probably have to pull it out and mess with it a lot. But um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment or message me on Instagram, like I've said before. Or if you like the video, go ahead and give it a like and make sure to subscribe so I can keep this channel going. All right, thank you guys. I'll see you next time.